guys, it's Marauder Collective. So the first video I'm gonna do is a kit breakdown, uh, basically going through my Pelican case of what I brought on my most recent deployment. It was the most uh, asked video that I got DM wise. So we're gonna do that uh, overview of the kit. So uh, as I break down the Pelican case, it's gonna be tough because it was so unique in the mission set that I was doing. We're doing PSD, but hopefully you guys can get some inspiration on what I was doing. All right, so for the main gear, that I carried when I was traveling. Um, I would use the Pelican Air 1615. So the reason why I chose this case is because it's lighter than the 1650, it's a little bit smaller, but uh, it's best for air travel. This is actually the largest size case you can actually have as a carry-on. Not, not that I flew commercial too much anyway, but it was definitely the lightest case that fit the most stuff that I needed as I was uh, moving around from country to country. All right, so once we have the lid open on the uh, Pelican, I just put some soft side Velcro and then uh, basically just put some uh, rough side Velcro on these Magpul docker pouches to hold uh, like batteries and chem lights and extra cables and stuff. So on the back panel, I just have uh, patches, a KDU, a Streamlight pen light, uh, extra tourniquet, strobe, chem light bundle, and then some uh, more patches and whatnot. And here I have some stuff for my uh, 152 radio and then here just uh, miscellaneous batteries and chem lights and whatnot. All right, so first we're gonna be going over the, the kit that I was using most often while uh, deployed. So this is the uh, Cry ABS. And how I had it set up, again, is very mission specific for PSD, but I ran, some would say obviously more stuff than I needed to, but a lot of times I was traveling alone with a you know high ranking person or a boss and I had to account for not only myself, but his equipment and medical for him and whatnot. So it's very oriented for my mission, but we'll just go over it briefly. So on the front of the uh, ABS right here, we have just a Blue Force Gear horizontal uh, mag pouch. And this is, would be my speed reload. So all I would do is pull that magazine out and that would get fed into the gun. Um, this pouch, I mean, the retention is getting uh, looser over time, but I uh, had no problems with it. Behind that, I just have the ABS uh, triple shingle. And uh, so I have three more mags right there. What's nice about this is the uh, the axle adapter for the ABS. I could take this off and put different panels on there, like the Mark V, uh, just different like, placards and whatnot. Above that, I had the KDU. So we ran 152's uh, Motorola handhelds, and we had uh, 152's in, in the vehicles. So uh, I would just take my cable and I can route it and I can hop between frequencies and whatnot while I was uh, plugged in and not have to pull my radio out. So that was a nice feature I had. Behind that, I just had a Samsung and there I could uh, download maps, uh, LZs and whatnot for the movement itself. Uh, right next to that, the TEA um, push to talk. This is my favorite. It's the most uh, responsive when you click it. Next to it, I had the uh, Raptor shears from Leatherman. Uh, these are nice, uh, just for miscellaneous cutting stuff. Obviously, it can be used for cutting off clothing and stuff like that. Behind that, just two chem lights, a blue and an IR. That's for like each unit has their own uh, procedures on that. Uh, here, I just have some hemostats, um, just for random pulling stuff. Um, a lot of times, I'll pull like webbing through there with that or whatever. Next, to that 152. I uh, have the relocation kit as well. So sometimes I ran the short antenna. Other times I had the whip in the back. On the top right here, I had the axle admin pouch. And here's where I kind of uh, stored the wires for the KDU and the, that's the adapter for the relocation kit. Had a notepad. And then I would, I would have like a channel sheet. Um, any type of literature that I need for the mission would just go shoved in there, the pens and whatnot extra patches I would swap with dudes and things of that nature. Uh, moving to the right side, I just had a cat tourniquet in a Shaw Concepts uh, tourniquet pouch. Next to that, I would have a smoke. Uh, obvious reasons to have a smoke. Uh, I ran that and then on the back panel, I brought a thermite for destroying, uh, say, you know, jammers or a vehicle, whatever the situation is. Next to that, it's just a Winkler. And that does it for the uh, front panel. All the, uh, the 152, and I would run the uh, separate Motorola radio in the uh, Feral Concepts wings. Um, that's it for the front panel. All right, so on the left side of Cumberbund, 
I just have the uh, ABS side plate pouch. Um, I didn't run these too often overseas, but I probably should have. Um, but now I run them all the time. Uh, and then right here, I have the relocation kit for the antennae if I, if I wanna run that routed to the back panel. On the shoulder pads of the ABS, I have this little uh, ranger band to store the antennas, whether I'm running a large one up front or in the back, so it's not hitting me in the neck. Oftentimes in PSD, you don't wear helmets, um, even on movements. So I like to have some sort of light that I can manipulate uh, looking at something without you know, being, being hands off. So I have the red lens on there and the white light. So both, I just have that Velcroed onto these uh, first spear shoulder pads. But I like running the uh, side slick because I do run a hefty belt kit. So I don't like stuff uh, hindering my draws or reloads from there. So on the uh, opposite side, cummerbund, uh, I don't run, uh, like I said, too much on the side. I just have that uh, cry pouch right there and the tourniquet, but I run it slick with the side plate pouch. Um, then for the back panel, uh, I don't have bangers anymore, but in here I'd run some bangers and then a uh, mirror, signal mirror. And then here I'd run an additional smoke. So I'd normally have a, either a thermite or a smoke up front and then an additional in the back. In this pouch right here. All right, so in this pouch, I uh, ran a battery charger for my phone, like a portable battery charger, um, like hygiene stuff, toothbrush, um, zip ties, tape, things of that nature. And then in this pouch, I had uh, always like an additional blowout kit for someone else if they ever needed that. So I tend to run that slick. I didn't use the uh, mag inserts on the uh, back panel for the cry back panel for the 2.0, but beyond the back panel right here, if you would take it off, I'm just running the, uh, the relocation kit and then a tie down for that antenna again to keep it all streamlined on the back right here. So sometimes I wouldn't run the back panel, especially if I was doing a lot of vehicle work, because this is obviously not too comfortable to lean on for hours. But uh, it was, I ran it a lot of the times, especially uh, in certain environments. So it was nice to have it. If not, just take it off. All right, so I don't like running uh, drop pouches, like mat pouches or anything like that too often. Um, again, when I was doing like single man movements with just my boss, I liked having additional medical on me. So I ran this for a couple months, but this is the uh, Coyote Tactical Solutions uh, drop pouch. And it's nice because it also offers armor while you know, so you extend your armor past your plate carrier. So it has a pistol rated plate in the back, but I have a pretty, I guess, basic uh, medical kit for while overseas. So that won't go too into depth. I mean, everyone has their own uh, SOPs on what they're supposed to carry, but I like this one. Um, the Spirit's one obviously is also nice. But this is something, another you know, thing that would make, uh, extend my medical care to whoever, or even myself. All right, so I was mentioning before about you know changing the front panel uh, placard on the play carrier with this adapter from Axel. So um, very easily, I could change you know to a sub gun. Uh, like we run the ACP nines now, but they had MP5s that were uh, TPU, like they stayed on base uh, while deployed. So I can run this placard. Um, this is another one. This is a uh, a Mark V with just a Blue Force triple on there. And this is a Mark IV, but um, unfortunately I didn't have the ability to, you know, bring all this extra stuff and the post office was closed while I was there. But uh, this just in changing out with a clip system like this enhances your ability to, if you have to make kit adjustments on the fly, depending on what you're doing, uh, very easy. All right, so when uh, I don't run the admin pouch for the medical, which is most times, I run the uh, focus uh, plate medical kit. And I love these. There are some downsides to them, um, but this is a deployment trauma kit too. But uh, I like these because it's streamlined. I don't like running kit on the sides of my plate carriers. So I run this most often with an additional uh, medical kit on my belt kit. So the next piece of kit, uh, I also ran a JPC. Uh, this is a modified JPC to be an NJPC. Uh, all that means is uh, that these flaps were sewn into the uh, carrier itself. But I ran this a lot of times when towards the end of the deployment, we were doing more base to base movements. So it wasn't like a, we, we, we would fly either fixed wing or by helo. 
So we didn't have to have, I'd need to carry as much sustainment equipment as normal. So this would be like the bare minimum of what I would carry on a mission or a movement. Uh, I ran this a few times during like vehicle movements too, just cause I didn't feel like carrying um, as much equipment and whatnot. But uh, I would just take most of the pouches off of the AVS and then just put them onto the JPC. So again, I have the horizontal uh, blue force pouch, three additional mags. Uh, I keep one with the flap covered so that it's secure in case of a rollover or whatever. And then I just have American flag patch and then dirty mic patch. If you don't know where that's from, you're uncultured. And the admin pouch right here, the same Leatherman shears. And then uh, the two chem lights, both blue and IR. Uh, sometimes I'd run a 10 speed here for an additional ammo, but then uh, it's the same, same across the entire thing. So again, you're going to have the short concepts tourniquet pouch and then a smoke. And then the, uh, the back panel is completely slick. I didn't put anything on there just so I could have really easy in and out of vehicles. And then on the uh, inside is just the 152 and the ferro wings. All right, so the uh, last piece of kit is a low-vis carrier. There's definitely better options. This is the one that I, I used. This is the Velocity Systems. And uh, basically, um, especially in Iraq when I was doing PSD, uh, certain buildings wouldn't allow you to carry a firearm or have an overt kit on it because you were with the boss and no one was carrying. Um, so how we got around that was that we put low-vis body armor on over a T-shirt and then uh, we would put a dress shirt or a collared shirt over that. And then with this carrier, all I would do is have my plates. And then I, again, I would have the Focus trauma pad or trauma uh, backer uh, kit that would have my medical kit in there. I would shove a tourniquet in my pocket. If we were doing a covert mission where we weren't allowed to wear our full kit, have a long gun on us, um, we had a concealed carry, we'd run this kit. Uh, with a radio shoved either in the back of the cummerbund or in our back pocket. And then we would be carrying, um, we all used uh, T-Rex sidecars. Uh, this is the older generation, but uh, we would have the M17 with an X300 on there and then uh, additional magazine. And then we would carry in our pocket with a Neo mag, an additional magazine. So we have three pistol magazines and then in our back pocket or cargo, we would just shove a tourniquet. All right, next we're gonna be going over the uh, helmet setup. So um, very rarely did I ever use uh, a helmet in PSD. Uh, even at nighttime, we had them like in our, in our bags, in the trucks or uh, in our gear bags when we were traveling, but it wasn't in our SOP to wear them. Um, is that the right answer? No, but more often times than not, even on missions, we never wore them. Uh, only once I can recall, once or twice wearing them. Uh, but I'll go over mine. This is how I have mine set up. So um, I didn't like taking the ops cores. Uh, I usually ran them on, since I didn't run the helmet, I had the uh, ops cores off of it in, in, in this configuration. But uh, when I was flying, so I did uh, dozens of fixed wing flights to countries, to different countries. And I would either put Peltors on for traveling just to cancel out the noise of the aircraft. But uh, I more often times than not would use these for the range and for travel. And then these uh, would stay on the helmet or I'd use those while on mission with like a baseball hat. Um, but I guess from the uh, comms is, Ear Pro is the Opscore amps. Um, super nice. I did have a problem with them. They did break, but Opscore did fix them. So uh, no worries there. Right here, I have the uh, SNS Precision Max mount with the Surefire Vampire head. Um, so if I was wearing my helmet and something did happen, uh, I had the ability to, you know, put it towards the sky, light up the room. Um, could also, you know, switch it over to IR. Um, American flag IR. Going to the back of it, we have the Ferro Concepts uh, PBS 31 battery holder. This just keeps everything nice and secure. Don't gotta worry about uh, things flying off, whether it's the battery pack or the uh, strobe. So that's tethered down here as well. Um, then coming on this side, just have the 31 cable routed. Um, going up to the front and I have the uh, forward observations patch. I did have a, uh, a Mohawk camera here. 
but that fell off because I was an idiot and I didn't uh, turn uh, tie it down. But then right here, I have the Brown Bear Industries uh, Caddy Daddy, where I would normally have a uh, additional battery uh, for the 31s or for the um, max mount. It's just a nice piece of kit that I can take on and off, just extra retention for the night vision. And then uh, right here, we have the PVS 31s. And then holding this down right here, this is the micro bats. Uh, I'm not sure what that like lanyard's called, but it stops the uh, Wilcox from wobbling because for some reason, Wilcox thinks that it's okay to have a wobbly mount when it costs $500. So that just keeps it secure so the nods don't wobble. So I have that tethered on. So now the mount is more secure, especially in the down position when there's tension under it. And then on the top right here, just have the uh, focus hop lights. What's the, what these do is give it protection from like, I'm training some munitions or airsoft or whatever. And then they, these rings can come off and you can adjust the uh, amount of light that comes through. So there's they come with a few different ones. So when you're driving or reading a map or doing whatever, like fine motor skills, uh, you can just flip those over. And you have that little aperture. If not, they tuck away nicely. I have the uh, Ranger bands I cut to hold the bikini cover because it only comes with uh, the one. So if I don't want to run these, I can just toss the bikini cover back over. And uh, that's it. That's the helmet right there. All right, last piece of kit uh, is going to be the belt setup, belt kit. So starting on the base of the belt is a Ronin Tactics Sentry belt. Um, a lot of great belts. I prefer the uh, Velcro belt. Um, I like to have the two piece design. So when I'm on base or not running my kit, I could still have like the inner belt uh, on me. And then when you do a mission, I can just put that right over and it'd be, uh, there's no shifting. It's not hitting my back panel or riding up my uh, waist, but starting on the front, this is a uh, soil eater tourniquet pouch. And I just have a Sharpie shoved in there to, you know, mark the tourniquet or for like, range use. Uh, the holster is a Safari Land for the uh, M17 X300. Behind it, I have the uh, True North Concepts plate. This allowed me to, instead of taking up three rows of Molly, uh, just takes up two so I can run more stuff. Uh, and then here is the nub mod for the Safari Land. And I, I do run the leg strap. I like to have uh, no wobble when I'm even walking or running. But moving forward, or rearward, I should say, the uh, here's a frag pouch. Um, we did have frags. Uh, more often times than not, they were just left in the vehicles. But I would have one right there sometimes. Um, behind the just, just a pouch is the uh, Tor knife. He engraved it for me right there. And then in this pouch, um, I would keep this uh, empty right here. So if I was doing just like a meet and greet on base with my principal, I can shove us the radio in there and not have to, you know, throw up my back pocket. So I'd keep this empty for that radio because no matter what the movement was or meet and greet, or if even if I was meeting, say like in the garden for a meeting between two generals or sergeant majors, I would have at least have this kit on because I can accomplish the mission with just this. This is enough sustainment equipment for me to uh, get by. So uh, right here, I have a multi-tool multi -tool from Leatherman. Uh, I'm not sure of the model on this one, but uh, that's the one I ran. And then in the uh, pouch itself, I would have, uh, I keep this main part empty because when we would give our mission briefs, we'd have the uh, the piece of paper saying what the mission is and then the PACS list, which is important to know what principal and his posse is going where, plus where you are in the movement. So if I'm, you know, lead vehicle or, you know, counter assault truck, whatever it is, I had that sheet because sometimes it does change your position. So I would shove that in there and then a protein bar, but then I'd have a pen, another Sharpie, a Viz 17 panel, this one's from North American Rescue. It's nice and tiny. It's already pre-cut from a Viz 17 panel. And then an additional right in the rain notepad. Uh, 
like to have those on me to take additional notes during briefs and uh, pertinent information, like uh, radio freaks and stuff like that. Moving down, uh, this is the Coyote Tactical Solutions, uh, I think it's burrito, but the uh, medical pouch. I like to have the medical pouch to where the content can all come out. I don't like tearaways or pullaways um, on the belt kit. I like so that I can take the medical content, in this case, this uh, pouch that they sell with it, that has all the gear you need already so I can take it out and work. Um, the downside of that is that if we got to hurry up and move, you know, shit is going to be flying everywhere. But I like to have it so that I'm not struggling to constantly reach somewhere and pull more kit out. And under there, just another Gen 7 cat tourniquet. So on my belt kit, I always run two cat tourniquets, one here and then one on the front. Um, and then on my play carrier, I'll have at least an additional one more. And then I'll always have more readily available. Like in the truck, you have obviously ammo. Uh, MREs, water, uh, medical. Moving forward, I have the pig gloves. Uh, these are pretty nice. I don't run gloves really ever, even when I'm shooting. Uh, and I like to have the ability to feel for like, the rifle and whatnot. So these are more for like range day use or I have to move something. And then the carabiners. So I have two uh, locking carabiners. Uh, the reason why I had two in addition to holding the chem lights and gloves is that I would attach if I needed to my gas mask. And I would put my gas mask onto these two uh, carabiners so I can run my gas mask drop down onto my thigh right here. Next is the Halo Strategic uh, Rifle Mag Pouch. This is, uh, this is pretty new on my belt kit, but I do like it because I can run 308 mags, um, obviously 556 five, mags. It takes a variety of mags, even subgun mags will fit in there. So this is more for like range use. I can just like have to not change the pouch out. It's super slim design. Um, moving forward, I have chem lights. I run uh, Viz IR, Viz IR. Um, people run sometimes on two separate sides. And then moving forward, I have these uh, essentially knockoff T-Rex arms carriers and they're running on tech locks. The reason why I like them at an angle is not only for like a speed reload, um, but also I'm a little bit shorter, you know, just under six foot. And uh, the if these were straight, the mags tend to hit the bottom of the plate bag or the uh, radio I'm running. So I like having them on a slight angle so I can pull the magazine out quick and it's not messing with my kit. And then moving forward, uh, I was riding in helos a lot. So I uh, had a Yates retention lanyard and basically it's wrapped a uh, camo form around it. So it's not as uh, loud when you're walking around. So there's no, usually that'd be metal on metal and it would make some clanking. Obviously this part attaches into the helo or the vehicle if you're doing that. And then God forbid something happens, you can tear away and get out of there. Uh, so that's the belt kit. And then, um, like I said, I'd always run this at the bare minimum on a mission. Uh, this has everything I need to accomplish it, especially if we were doing like a base to base, uh, uh, meet and greet on the base. Uh, I wouldn't put a play carrier on base. Uh, it's just not my speed. We didn't have any SOPs for it. So uh, I would run just this. Dude, I'm thinking about making it OnlyFans. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs>